What's going on everybody? C4 here and welcome back to today's 32 team 7 round mock draft series where today we're going to be taking a look at the team that doesn't hold a first round pick, doesn't hold a second round pick, but they hold a third round pick and that is the 87th pick in the draft and that is the Chicago Bears, a team that doesn't actually have a whole lot of draft assets this season, only five picks within the draft, which makes it a tricky mock draft because everybody should know at this point in time that, you know, you know, everyone knows there's that little B base god thing. And I've kind of had that going on in the channel here. The last two years, I have called teams that didn't make the playoffs that went on to make the playoffs. Two years ago, I started the Jacksonville Jaguars. Last year, I became a believer of the Bears. This year, for all intents and purposes, I picked the Bills to sneak into the wild card in the AFC. But the Bears last year, I mean, outside of when they had to come play my Philadelphia Eagles in the playoffs, I was pulling for the Bears every single week. That that game, week 17 against the Vikings, that the Bears had to win for the Eagles to make the playoffs. Like, I haven't cheered for a team. I don't think I even cheered for the Eagles that hard at any point during the regular season last year. So, uh, I'm going to try to hook you Bear fans up here with a very solid mock draft. So, without further ado, looking at the offseason, uh, lots of changes here for the Bears. No more Adrian Amos. Bryce Callahan is gone on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, offensively, you know, Jordan Howard coming to my Philadelphia Eagles. Thank you very much. Appreciate it a whole lot. Uh, so there are some holes that we need to try to fill. So at pick 87, first off, I have them going. Ugo Amadi, safety from Oregon. He had a really good combine, 4.51 in the 40, 4.19 shuttle. He had big production at Oregon uh, in two years, or the last two years. 100 in tackles, 6.5 TFL, 7 interceptions, 2 pick sixes, 16 pass breakups. He's a versatile defender. He can play safety. He can play a little bit of nickel. And when you look at the defense right now, especially the secondary for the Chicago Bears, they need a new safety and they need a new nickel. Um... Amos is gone. He went to divisional rival Green Bay Packers. Bryce Callahan followed Vic Fangio to the Denver Broncos. So there's definitely uh, open spots for competition. More so at safety. That's where I'm viewing him because at nickel, they bought in Buster Scrine from the New York Jets, and he's played there at a decent level. Uh, so I more so see Amadi as an Amos-style safety. You know, that cover guy, guy with great speed, sideline-to-sideline -side abilities. Uh, good complement to what they have already in Eddie Jackson. They brought in HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix. So I'm kind of more so viewing Amadi as that third potential safety. But Clinton Dix, I mean, he has been up and down. I know he has, like, a decent name because he had a couple big years with the Green Bay Packers. But I guess if you're looking at straight swaps, the Packers got the much better player in the deal, landing Adrian Amos uh, versus Clinton Dix, who, you know, did spend a couple seconds in Washington. Um, but yeah, they brought him in on a short-term deal, and I, I honestly think, you know, he went from being underrated to being just people recognize his name, so they assume he's still good. He did not play very well for Washington last year. Uh, I would not view him as a player that was, you know, the Packers starting safety two, three years ago that was getting a lot of turnovers. So he has to prove himself. So, you know, from that standpoint, a guy like Amadi is going to push him. He's going to push him for some starting reps. Worst case scenario, Amadi's at third safety. More and more teams use that third safety on the field in nickel sets. Um... But ultimately, I think Amadi definitely shores up that safety room for the foreseeable future because obviously Eddie Jackson is going to be a long-term starter there. I don't personally view HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix as one. You got Dion Bush out of the U, fourth-round pick in 2016. He's more of a special teamer guy, so I think Amadi fits in very well to that defense. Going into the fourth round of pick 126, I was liking Travion Williams, running back from Texas A&M. He had an okay combine, running at 4-5-1. Uh, Big-time production, especially last year in 2018 for the Aggies. 2,000 yards from scrimmage and 19 total touchdowns. He's going to be viewed as Jordan Howard's replacement. I think right now, I mean, Tariq Cohen is the best running back in that backfield. They brought in Mike Davis from Seattle. He's been... You know, he's, he's an all right guy. He's like a good running back three, a guy that in case of injury could step up, give you 60, 70 yards if you need it. But a guy like Travion Williams can be that Jordan Howard replacement of potential 1,000-yard back, especially in a heavy rotation with Tariq Cohen. He fits Matt Nagy's scheme. Unlike Jordan Howard, he can catch. He has that home run ability, averaged 6.5 yards per carry last season. And he has good pass protection for a guy that's just around a 200-pound running back, which is one of the biggest aspects that the Chicago Bears will be losing in Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard is one of the best pass protection running backs in the NFL. And they're going from that to a guy like right now on the roster in Tree Cohen who absolutely offers zero in terms of pass protection. The only time he brings up pass protection is if teams just refuse to blitz because he is such a weapon out of the backfield catching the ball. So a guy like Travion Williams, I think, is you get some of the positives that they lost in Jordan Howard, and you also get a lot more of what Matt Nagy wants in a running back that Jordan Howard was unable to offer. 
Going into the fifth round at pick 162, Island selecting Michael Dogby, defensive end from Temple. He had an absolutely insane pro day as one of the biggest combine stumps. A lot of people are looking at his pro day to see what was going on. He's six foot three, almost 290 pounds, running a 4.92 in the 40, 34 reps on the bench press. If he would have went to the combine, I mean, I don't want to overvalue the combine. I think he's he's going third, fourth round. He wouldn't be available here in the fifth, but because it was at a pro day, there's, there's a very legitimate shot that the Bears will be able to you know, scrape him up here in day three. He's coming up a big year with Temple. 72 tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks, three forced fumbles. I look at the roster right now. I think he could be a defensive end rotational type player as a rookie. Right now, you got John Bullard, who I'm a big fan of from a Florida Gators third round pick in 2016. Uh, Roy Robertson Harris was a pretty good rotational guy last year, but they love to ro rotate their defensive ends. And it seems like you know, pretty much whoever's not Akeem Hicks is constantly coming in and off the field, which is healthy. I mean, look at the Philadelphia Eagles. That's what we do to success. And teams around the league are starting to uh, pick up on that. And we're not the only ones that do it. I'm just saying that as an example. And I kind of look at Dogby as to be, you know, the kind of guy that can develop and that upside to be a potential starter in 2020 alongside Hakeem Hicks. Because right now, I mean, you always want your two clear starters at defensive end. And then you rotate them in and out to keep them fresh. And right now, the Bears only have one in Hakeem Hicks. You got Bilal Nichols, Jonathan Bullard, Roy Robertson, Harris. That's, you know, a rotational. You don't have that guy that you could pencil in as in every down starter. I think a guy like Michael Dugby has the athletic profile to develop into that type of player on that defense for Chuck Pagano. Going into the seventh round, finishing up with the Bears, where they have two seventh round picks. First up at 222, I was selecting Jordan Brown, cornerback from South Dakota State. Trust me, did, did my work on this guy's small school prospect. Good size, had a decent combine, six feet tall, 200 pounds, running a 451 in the 40, a 39 and a half inch vertical. So he tested very, very well. And you probably could argue for the last two years has been, if not the best, like a top three cornerback in the FCS. And more and more teams are going to be showing respect to these FCS players because they've had a lot of success with these guys, especially day three. Like day three is where FCS players turn to dominate and get a lot of teams exceptional value because they're just getting underrated because they didn't play for a big time college school uh we look at jordan brown the last two years at south dakota state as a jackrabbit 100 tackles six interceptions 21 pass breakups so he's all over the field and when you look at the secondary right now for the chicago bears i think the cornerback three spot is up for grabs between uh richard fant between kevin tolliver from lsu I actually liked that as a udfa last year uh, and, and I think you throw in Jordan Brown into that mix. There is going to be an open competition to see who can get that third cornerback spot behind Kyle Fuller and Prince of Mukamara. So, you know, adding depth like this in the seventh round, that can compete for a lot of snaps as a rookie for a team that doesn't have a whole lot of draft picks like the Chicago Bears uh, is exactly the kind of pick that you want to try to make. And they finish up the draft in the seventh round at pick 238. Items selecting Ty Summers, linebacker from TCU. He's a converted safety, so he can kind of be utilized as a utility player on that defense. Had a big combine, 4-5-1, was like in the top five for speed. Uh, one of the better cover linebackers in this draft, considering uh, the guys that are going to be available on day three. Like I think if you're listing like the top ten cover linebackers, probably the first, you know, you, you'd assume like 80% of that list is going to be gone before the beginning of day three because that is what the NFL covets nowadays you need linebackers that can cover because it's a passing league the fact that ty summers definitely makes that top 10 list and is still available in the seventh round i think is going to be an easy pick here for the chicago bears that need to continue to add some inside linebacker depth you got roquan you got nick Witowski, you got trevathan i don't really know how much you know trevathan's going to be in the long-term plans of this defense he's starting to get up there and age a little bit but bringing a guy like ty summers to come in and compete probably for the linebacker four spot you're clearly going to get some high level special teams ability uh, because of where he can tackle and he's a great athlete. That, those are the kind of picks you get in the seventh round. You get guys that, you know, can tack on to the bottom 53 of the roster. And to do that, most likely you're going to have to be a solid and almost to a point of excelling on special teams. And I think with Jordan Brown, you get that cornerback three upside. And then with Ty Summers, you get a linebacker four, four five, depending on how many they want to dress and carry on the roster. But definitely some special teams ability. So there you go, guys. That is the seven-round mock draft for the Chicago Bears. Bear fans in particular, let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with this mock draft. As always, if you're the first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.